Well, here we are again. The shop, complete mess, utter disarray. A relatively healthy laundry list of like small, unexciting, medial bicycle tasks that I really should get done that I've been putting off. And a slightly rainy day outside, so in my most effective way to get tasks like this out of the way, create content while doing it, it's Q&A time. Okay, this thing put aside for a minute. This thing into the spotlight for a minute. Just has a, just has a flat. Okay, first, uh, first question. Any bike packing plans for this year? Um, plans, no. Will I do it? Yeah, hopefully, if, you know, if we're allowed to do anything in this world ever again. Any advice for a new bike commuter who doesn't have a shower at work? Um, yeah, Jeff, I also didn't have a shower at work. Um, I would typically leave the house late, ride really hard to get to work, like slightly less late than I should have been, and uh, then I would just kind of like deal with the sweat for the first like hour, hour and a half. Yeah, that's not great advice, I know. Gingerbread Soldier asks, any plans to ride the Dirty Kanza or something similar? I mean, I'd really like to, but you know, everything's pretty restricted right now, so it's hard to go do anything. One of these days I would say, I'll be at an event like that, I hope. Okay, next up on the docket, the old Red Crux. Because of the short brake hose here. So Moritz asks, mountain bike, gravel, fixed, or road? Which do you prefer? Uh, the answer is gravel, like riding a gravel bike on the road to a mountain bike trail that's like a little bit too hard for a gravel bike to be on, but like it can be done. And then, uh, and then ride that for a while and then be back on the road and then come home and not be hurt. So Miguel asks a pretty good question. What advice can you give to someone who's a beginner cyclist riding an entry level bike out with other cyclists who have like super bikes? Yeah, definitely allow yourself to lust after those bikes, but do your very, very best to not allow those other bikes that are around you to dictate whether or not you wanna go ride. Do not be deterred to go ride just based on a bike alone. Every bike is a good time. I hope you do believe me. I seem to be out of electrical tape. I'll be right back. Okay, that, uh, that definitely took longer than anticipated. We entered uh, like full lockdown here in Nova Scotia last night. So I wanted to like go grab some other stuff and then just. Grummel asks, are you on uh, Reddit? Like r slash x biking? No, I don't go on Reddit. I don't like Reddit. Reddit is just, I don't understand it. I don't know what you are not. Anyway, I'm not on there. Seiko FPS doesn't ask a question, but does say what a beauty of a bike. Thank you. Ben Speed, I don't believe you've asked if I've done motorcycle trials. Um, I have not done motorcycle trials. I really, really wish that I could be into motorcycles in the same capacity that I'm into bicycles, but I just, there's the money. Ugh. I went, uh, I went red. Anyway, this is a good question as we work on this bike. Is it worth buying a used carbon road frame. I was told that carbon has a shelf life and I should never buy used carbon. Well, Christian, um, funny you should say that. This is a carbon road frame that I bought used. I personally think a lot of people like to, uh, like to use the caution for buying anything that isn't brand new and just purely to either A, sound smart, or B, uh, are just like fearful and scared. But of course, like anything, buying used, uh, buyer beware. I hope you do believe me. Now, Jerry is sarcastically asking, do you really think red and pink look good together? Yeah. Grant Gridley asks, can you talk about your engineering degree? Why did you decide to get it? 
and do you plan on doing anything with it? Yeah, okay, we can talk about that a little bit. So as clarification, I actually have a college level diploma in mechanical engineering. Uh, all the interesting engineering stuff is like compacted into two years and then all the the kind of electives are just omitted and then you can get to work right away. So to kind of answer your question, do you plan on doing anything with it? I did. And the reply below you is actually like a really good snapshot of what working with your engineering degree or diploma is truly like. The work itself ends up being a lot of like uh, managerial. The reason that I decided to take mechanical engineering was because I really wanted to understand, comprehend, and be able to look at the way forces and stresses go into something and how those materials will react, whether or not they'll break. And I'll use that education, that skill, that understanding to rationalize and confirm uh, any ideas that I might have. The, the GT is like a pretty good example of that. Let's, like, let's use that as a, a very broad example. So we have the GT, right? We, we welded a IS disc brake mount onto it. Is like, is it safe? Is it gonna work? Are we gonna be okay? No, I haven't done this like in a while, but thankfully an engineering student here on a mountain bike farm has actually gone through a pretty good engineering analysis of a typical braking situation that I'm literally just gonna use, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna draw on it instead of pulling out my books and dusting off the cobwebs and rust of my actual engineering analysis abilities. I understand this is becoming a long answer. I apologize for that. 80 kilogram rider riding at 36 kilometers per hour wants to stop in 10 meters, 33 feet of distance. Using, using V initial squared equals V final squared, two times the acceleration times the distance. That's this equation here. You solve for the rate of acceleration. In their analysis, it's five meters per second squared backwards to slow down. So minus five meters per second squared. And then to find out how much force is taken to actually get that bike stopped from the speed it was at, uh, you've got your force equals mass times acceleration which gives you 400 newtons to stop the bike. We found 120 newton meters of torque happening at the wheel hub. That's like for a 26 inch wheel. And then isolating the force itself on the brake caliper, he uses a 180 millimeter rotor. We'll do that just uh, for worst case scenario. He finds 1,333 newton meters of force acting on the caliper. A force of 1,333 newtons going that direct. As an engineering student, I know that you understand that that force is actually acting on that tube in two directions, the X and the Y. So to do this properly, you would want to isolate those two different forces. You'd want to find out what's happening in that direction and that direction. But let's just pretend all 1,333 Newtons are actually acting like purely down on that tube, like as a bending force, no compression happening. Fair? Now 1,333 Newtons sounds like a lot. Let's just convert that to a pound force because it seems to make more sense. 300 pounds of force acting in a bending, like a bending force on that tube. So the next step as a proper analysis would be to actually like look at a tube for the true dimensions that we have here. What I did instead was take some quick measurements of what that material actually is. It's 22 inches long. It's about three quarter of an inch diameter. Wall thickness is uh, two millimeters, so 0 0.09 of an inch. Material is 4130 load is 300 pounds and our safety factor for all of that is 1.5. Basically what the safety factor of 1.5 means is it would take a force of about 450 pounds on the center of the tube to actually bend it past it's a uh, modulus of elasticity. So technically speaking, without adding any structure, we are over-engineered by 50%. Yeah. It's kind of surprising. That was like a super long answer. But in my case, without even doing the analysis, uh, I'm satisfied that this is not going to be a problem and uh, the, the brace will be the overkill required to make sure that nothing ever happens. Okay. Space Monkey asks, how much did your welder cost 
and how hard is it to learn how to weld simple things like frame crap. So this welder, I think I bought it on sale at Princess Auto for 200 Canadian dollars. As for uh, how hard is it to learn how to weld, it's really easy to booger weld stuff. It's really hard to weld uh, properly, correctly, and uh, like visually appealingly. Needed the steel. And then because I am working on the GT, what type of riding do you plan on doing with the GT? Uh, there's a lot of questions on here about like, are you gonna dirt jump it? Are you gonna do crazy stuff with it? Um, I'm not gonna do proper dirt jumping with it, but mostly it's just like something to like pedal as fast as I can on, hop up stuff, down stuff, and then like, I really want to 360 it and bar spin it. All right, watch your eyes there, kids. You can kind of see a couple spots where like the skills coming back a little bit. Imagine, just imagine what I could do if I would actually practice before doing things. I think that's probably her for uh, all the fab work that needs to be done. That doesn't look too bad. I also cleaned up, I cleaned up the mount a little bit as well. And no more posts, posts gone. I hope you do okay, let's, uh, let's finish this off with one question. Why do you hate the original Tri-Cross fork so much? This answer is super simple. Uh, I don't like the way it looks. Always a privilege to get all the little stuff done while answering all your questions.